back, I want you to reach over and get your Bibles and let's turn to the Word of God. We're going to the Gospel of St. Luke. That's the 10th chapter. We're going to begin reading at the 17th verse. That's the Gospel of Luke. Praise God, 10 and 17. And it reads like this. And the seven returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are suffering unto us through thy name. And he said unto them, I'll be held Satan as lightning falling from heaven. Now listen to what he said in this 19th verse. And behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and all the power of the enemy. Nothing shall by any means break you. Notwithstanding in this, rejoice not that the spirit are suffering unto you, but rather rejoice because your name was written in heaven. We thank God for the reading of his word. Our message today is coming from this 19th verse where it said, Behold, I give unto you power. Now these are the words of Jesus. For Jesus had sent, caused 12 disciples and sent them out. Then he called another 70 and sent them out. And the Bible said he gave them power to preach the gospel of deliverance, to lay a hand on the sick that the sick might be healed. Now I want you to know today, this is a great commission that minister go to all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And the apostle Paul declared in Romans 1 and 16, he said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ because it's the power of God under salvation to them that believe. Listen, beloved, if I can get you to believe the gospel, you can be delivered from whatever you're bound by. You believe in shame, I? You can understand them, my Lord. Listen, I've come to tell you this morning, you can have power of all those ungodly habits and those things that you're bound with. Jesus said, behold, I give you power. And the word power means possession or control, authority, or influence over others. Jesus said you can have this. I'm not so concerned about having power, authority over human beings. But thank God for the power over evil spirits. You believe in shame, I think. Now, many of you on the sound of my voice today, you are bound by evil spirits. This reason society cannot control or handle what has happened to our society. It's been innocent because it's motivated, bring about a spirit. You believe in shame, I think. Drug is not a disease. Alcohol is not a disease. When you look down deep, this thing is controlled by a spirit. And that spirit has to be dealt with. The only thing that can deal with the spirit is the power of God. You remember saying that? Yeah. Now, don't you know Jesus didn't say, Call me because I have the power. But he said, Behold, I give unto you power. You've been a power of a drug. Listen, did you not know you can have power over those drugs? You've been bound by alcohol. Alcohol is not a disease. If it's a disease, it's the only one that the nation has given license to produce it. License to sell it. Are you listening to me? The devil got your food. It's not a disease. It's sin. And it's controlled by a spirit. If it was a disease, don't call the police when somebody run over your daughter. That man just said, Call the doctor, send him to the hospital. You know that's not so. Let's deal with the cause of the problem. You may be shame at it. You need power over that thing. The only way you can get that power is come to God. You may be shame at it. Come to the gospel, St. John 1 and 9. That many receive him, to him give them power to become the sons of God. As many as believe on his name. But I want to go a little deeper than that. That's giving you power to become the sons of God. But he said, I give you power over devils and scoffings. Listen, the good news is you can be delivered. Now, when Jesus gave these boys the authority, they went out and tried it. And the Bible said they came back rejoicing. So even the devil was the devil was suffering to us through your name. Jesus said, in my name you should cast out devil. You shall lay hand on the sick, and the sick shall recover. Can we ever say my Listen, there are some sickness doctors can control. But, but when that sickness is created by a spirit, then doctors can't do anything with it. It takes the power of God. 
You remember Trey Mother? Listen, I don't care what you're about. Uh, Christ has a solution to your problem. All you have to do is turn to the Lord. Let God have his way in your soul. Listen, you may go to one of these, praise God, places where they wean you off alcohol. But let me tell you one thing. If you don't get power on the thing, you're going to eventually go back to it. Back to what it ain't said for whole. Pray God, you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. What you need, not only just to be saved. See, it's one thing to be saved. It's one thing to turn the chat, but it's another thing to receive Christ in your heart. It's another thing to receive the power and the anointing of God in your life. Yeah. Oh, I give it to you power over serpents and scorpions. Listen, men of your power. When you're bound for something, you have to yield to it. That's when I feel sorry for these people that are bound by drugs and bound by alcohol and cigarettes and many ungodly habits. You was a slave to it. I come to bring the good news. Christ can break that habit. All God wants you to do is come to him, surrender to him, be willing to surrender to the Lord. God will say the word shame means deliverance from sin. Listen, Jesus, when he was on earth, he conquered everything that was contrary to man. Now, if you notice in the Great Commission, he said, they shall lay hands on the sick, and the sick shall recover. God does not want you sick. God wants you well. God does not want you bound for drugs and be not ungodly habit. God wants you free, and whom the Son set free, he's free indeed. Can't you believe the word? I know we got a lot of skeptics. Said the days of miracles are over. God's not healing in this the sick anymore. Then where are you going to the doctors for? If it's not God's will for you to be healed, why go to the doctor? Don't you believe that lie? So I bring it. God was a miracle working God, and God's anointed me in. Bring it to pray the proud faith and heal the sick. So why don't you go out to the hospital and get to the hospital? The doctors are not doing it. Amen. Jesus didn't do it. This thing is operated by faith. He really said, according to your faith, be it unto you. Yeah. Why in the fifth chapter, praise God of Mark, St. John, the Bible said that was a multitude of important folks, but only one got healed, the one that exercised faith to try to get into the pool. Yeah. He really said, man, it was multitude, over 2,000 people there, praise God, was trying to get delivered, but only one got delivered. Listen, I thank God that's thinking about hinge on someone else. Just because your mama don't want to be saved, that's no excuse for you not being saved. So I said, hereditary, bring up this one handed down to generation. Well, why don't you break it? Just because your mother had heart trouble doesn't mean that you have to have that you not have the good news. Jesus is a deliverer. Just because your dad was a drunker, your grandpa was a drunker, doesn't mean that you have to be a drunker. Jesus Christ came to set the people free. Let me say, I to give you power over thy faith. Yeah. Well, I feel good. Yeah. You should know the truth, the truth should make you free. Now I'm giving you the truth. Then in that eighth chapter, that's 26 verse, said, Whom the Son set free is free indeed. What I'm trying to get you to see, you can be delivered. I don't care what you're bound, but how long you've been bound. They came back rejoicing. Said, Even the devil is subject to us. But you know, Jesus said, That's a small thing. Don't rejoice just because the devil is subject to you, but rejoice. Because your name is written down in the Lamb of the Lion. Listen, when God saves you, when God delivers you, He writes your name down in the Lamb of the Lion. Joining the church does not get you. Just because you sing in a choir does not get you your ticket to heaven. Just because you preach the word does not get you your ticket to heaven. God requires a lie. The Bible says, There's no other name under heaven while a man may be saved other than the name of Jesus Christ. You believe me, say, Amen. In the Bible class, 2 Corinthians 5 and 17, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. You was a drug addict, but when you get saved, God deliver you from drugs. God deliver you from sin. You may be saved, man. He makes a new creature out of you. He makes a friend, give you a friend to lie. All we got to know saying in this society, said no to
to drugs. But the person that's bound can't send no to drugs. If you don't have the power, you can say, my, my young people can't just say no to drugs. You got to have something. You can be say, my, you got to have Jesus in your life. So many of our young people is a slave to these ungodly things. That the devil is hatching up and putting on the scene. Listen, beloved. Just because you go to church on Sunday morning doesn't mean that you got power. Amen. Oh, there are many of our young people being influenced by things that they hear and see. The television is one of the biggest monsters that's influenced our society today. There's some hellish stuff coming over that TV. You can even say there's some ungodly stuff coming over that TV. Bring them in trying to wonder what was keeping up. Hallelujah. But listen, they're being instructed the wrong way. We need to preach the gospel. We need to cry. It's never before you believe it. Say, man, just taking guns away from people. It's not going to happen when we got to TV and see it Monday morning through Sunday night influencing people how to kill, how to commit adultery, how to steal, how to rob, how to catch aid. You believe it. Say, man. Get ready to 
Francisco de Burá murió a Dios en shock. Before you hear me talk about clothes, they think I'm looking at the material, no sir. I'm not looking at the material. When you start talking about what it's doing to the society, they want to put up an argument. We need the clothes. But it is the clothes. Amen. It is the clothes. It gets me as a teacher. It motivates them to rape you. If it wasn't, why do you want to sit up with all your Ouch. Boy, you got a split. We said, look, 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 take a look, come on. Look, look, look. Why are you exposing yourself? Because there's a demon of exposure in there. Now I'm working on that spirit that's inside of you that makes you want to wear those things. You're talking about sex harassment. You got your dress way up here. What are you saying? Look at me. Look at these thighs. Don't they look good? You got a spinky and one back there. What are you trying to send to society? No decent woman would dress like that. But wait a minute. Some of you do it because you don't know anybody. Because you think it's the style. I'm just in the style. They ever said, Love of your hell in the style. Amen. 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 I'm going to be what I'm saying. Amen. But you know what? God will give you power over that thing. Yes, where you can dress nice, look intelligent, yes. and dress decent. Where you can sit down anywhere in the church. Amen. 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 Behold, I give you power Amen. over the power of the enemy. Amen. Amen. We don't have to be a slave to these things in this world. Amen. You can be free. When the sun sets free, it's free indeed.